Across film history, the trope of forbidden love in the romance genre has been used to illustrate the social tensions of what is considered an unacceptable relationship in a particular time and place. Forbidden love is shown in different forms, whether it is the love between people from different social groups, love between people from feuding political groups, love that is not heteronormative, or love viewed as morally wrong, socially such as that which becomes an affair. This essay will discuss the representation of forbidden love in Wong Kar Wai's In the Mood for Love and Baz Luhrmann's William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Both films present forbidden love not as being wrong, but being at the mercy of the fate of the cultural context they are set in. In the Mood for Love tells the story of two neighbours who discover their spouses are having an adulterous affair. As they get to know each other, their relationship develops. However, in order to not follow in their spouse's footsteps, they forbid themselves from becoming lovers due to the negative societal view of adultery. The film is Wong's love letter to Hong Kong in the early 1960s in which he grew up. It depicts a moment in time before mass emigration from Hong Kong dispersed what had been a cultural melting pot. The Latin-influenced music supports the romantic and sensual atmosphere. Wong has said that Yumeji's theme, the recurring track throughout the film, became the reference for the film, like a waltz. The film shows the overpopulated apartment complexes where everything is covered and hidden, especially the nexus of forbidden relationships. Wong describes the film as not being a story about an affair, but a story about certain attitudes in a certain period of time in the history of Hong Kong, and how people take these things, they keep it as a secret. Lerman's adaptation of Romeo and Juliet uses the original Shakespearean story and its language in a modern setting to tell the story of star-crossed lovers from feuding families doomed to be kept apart. Lerman set out to make the film as if Shakespeare was making a movie today. He wanted to make it accessible for everybody. Taking place in an imaginary world created by an English writer who had never been to Italy, its original setting, made by an Australian director with American actors and shot in Mexico and San Francisco, the location of Verona takes on the characteristics not of one specific place, but rather the Western world and youth culture as a whole. Lerman wanted to communicate a message for the young, but also for an older generation, saying, If an older generation hands down its baggage, its negative baggage, they're going to end up with tragedy. They're going to end up with dead kids. While Lerman in Romeo and Juliet shows the hidden passion of forbidden romance as causing death and tragedy, Wong shows the romance in In the Mood for Love as a more subtle hidden affection existing in fleeting looks and gestures. The director's styles contrast social and historical cultural contexts, changing how forbidden love is depicted, showing that the representation of forbidden love changes not only in these films but within the romance genre as a whole. Both directors use camera and editing to represent forbidden love. Wong utilises framing to demonstrate the feelings and context of Mr Chow and Mrs Chan's relationship. The faces of their spouses are never revealed to the audience as if they are invisible. Only their backs are seen, they are heard off screen or referred to in dialogue between other characters. This can be seen as a commentary on how forbidden love only exists when hidden from the gaze of others. This framing technique also focuses the sympathy and emotions on the leads, showing the story of their relationship. As Wong says, we're not saying who's right, who's wrong. It's about a process, how people treated secrets. Framing is also used to create the sense as if the audience is watching the forbidden love alongside the neighbours. Scenes are repeatedly shot through frames within the frame, through objects in the foreground, in front of the camera. This communicates the feeling of claustrophobia in the tight-knit living conditions and the feeling that they are being watched by those around them. Accepted routine is established through repetition of the same angles in specific locations with the same shot types on certain objects, such as the repeated close-ups throughout of the office clock, enforcing the circular feeling to the film as it moves through seasons and years. This isolates the aspects that are changing, such as the details of their relationship and their growing feelings for each other, despite the fact that their relationship remains both hidden and non-sexual. The affection develops while remaining constrained due to being forbidden. In contrast to his subtle use of cinematography to present the narrative, Lerman uses dramatic editing with fast camera movements and extreme shot types to intensify the Shakespearean text, enforcing a sense of foreboding and dramatic irony as alternating perspectives reveal events to the audience. Repeated use of close-ups throughout the film, especially at moments of high tension, can be seen to exacerbate the emotions being portrayed. 
This presents the conflict between the two families in the extreme, which demonstrates why Romeo and Juliet cannot easily be together. Furthermore, the use of close-ups also communicates the passion between the couple and the passion which is felt by the supporting characters. This helps to concrete the film within the romance genre amongst the heavy action sequences present throughout the film. Close-up shots are contrasted with wide-sweeping shots and panning. This heightens the romanticism by creating a sense of awe and magnetism. Camera angles and zooming also establish the tensions between the Montagues and Capulets, the police and Romeo and Juliet. Severe and often high angles, sometimes point-of-view shots from the police in helicopters or from Juliet's balcony, intensify the danger in the street fights and in the risk of the forbidden romance. Juliet is often seen looking down from a higher angle on Romeo. This quotes the iconic balcony scene of Romeo and Juliet, as well as heightening the reverence Romeo has for her. This sets them on two separate spatial levels, showing how they belong to opposing backgrounds. Zooming is used to demonstrate instability, chaos and fast-paced action. Often being used when characters are entering forbidden territories, this camera movement embeds the idea of accidents occurring due to the haste and rash actions of the characters who are consumed by their conflict and competition. This builds up to the destruction of Romeo and Juliet and their romance. Forbidden love is destructed by nature as it exists within dangerous territory. Mise-en-scene is also used to represent forbidden love. Along first hints at the affairs of the lead spouses and Mrs Chan's boss through the use of props and costumes. The same gifts are bought for the spouse and the lover, symbolising the two-faced nature of adultery. These gifts are the details that are noticed by Mrs Chan and Mr Chow, the first bonding factor that brings them together to deal with their broken marriages. This, again, presents forbidden love as destructive by nature, something that is not solvable by the bribing nature of gift-giving. The many stylish Chongsam dresses Mrs Chan wears throughout the film can be seen as an outward expression of her need to be loved, which is not being fulfilled by her marriage. Her relationship with Mr Chow begins to fulfil this. Blocks of bright red, blues and greens contrast with deep shadows. This nostalgic noir-inspired atmosphere creates the feeling that tradition is at the forefront of the characters' minds, as well as their rules around love. Wong says, The colour is so vivid because everything from memory is vivid. It's beautiful because it's very close to your mind. Mise-en-scene is equally important to Romeo and Juliet. Catholic symbolism demonstrates the beliefs and devotion of the characters and the rules around love. Saturated reds and blues are dominant, alluding to the Virgin Mary, who is key to Catholicism and signifies the intensity and passion of their forbidden love. The cross is another motif throughout the film which enforces the concept of faithfulness to their religion and families. Neons are used to counteract traditional concepts, bringing a sense of youth and entertainment. This is reinforced by the pop-infused soundtrack. Forbidden love is shown as both sacred and as an impossible desire. The Hawaiian shirts worn by the Montagues symbolise the blooming of passion and romance. The sacred heart of Jesus on Romeo's costume symbolises his devotion and passion and future suffering caused by his forbidden romance. The costumes at the Masked Ball are also key symbols, showing the characters' roles in relation to the forbidden romance. Juliet's white angel costume reflects youth and purity. Romeo as the knight can be seen as embodying the role of chivalry and fighting in the name of love, not hatred. Juliet's mother as Cleopatra is seen as both having control as a queen while also being parallel with her daughter, as the story of Antony and Cleopatra is another story of forbidden love. Water as a setting and location is a theme of immersive desire. Romeo and Juliet's most romantic scenes are set around water. This scene also shows how their forbidden love, like in the mood for love, exists as hidden under the cloak of darkness. Water is cleansing and brings new life, just as their love forces their families to start afresh. Water is also a bearer of love. In classical mythology, Venus, the goddess of love, was born from water. Furthermore, when Romeo is banished, he is seen in the desert, a barren place, lacking water, void of their love. In conclusion, forbidden love in the romance genre is presented in these two films as existing as hidden desire and destructive. Forbidden love is shown as a warning, unable to exist out in the open due to the unlikelihood of cultural and communal acceptance, destroying the lovers or those around them. Desire is represented as the hamasha of modern society, where breaking the rules means exclusion from society. In the Mood for Love demonstrates a dual view of Hong Kong as both a sensual and claustrophobic environment. This presents forbidden love in the unglorified sense as beautiful but flawed. Romeo and Juliet presents the forbidden romance as being both created and destroyed by the clashing of powerful families within the confines of the city where they are doomed to collide. 
Both film settings perpetuate social pressures and breed the romance that comes out of it, simultaneously creating the tensions where it cannot thrive. Ultimately, forbidden love is presented as being a barrier to achieving a happy ending.